My ex-best friend attempted to take her life. And I don't care, I haven't reached out. She slept with my boyfriend behind my back. We're both 20 females, and we've been friends since reception, 4 to 5 years old, UK thing. She was my sister, my rock. We stood by each other through everything. When my parents divorced, she was there to offer a shoulder for me to cry on. And when her grandmother died, I was there keeping her afloat throughout high school. I'd been dating my boyfriend, 21 male, for about three years. We started dating in sixth form, a version of UK college, and he was my first serious relationship. I introduced him to my family, and he was many of my firsts. He was sweet, a little awkward being a gamer guy, but he treated me to date nights, and always made me feel special. Maybe this is me being young and dumb, but I thought I'd marry this guy someday. This was something I told my best friend. Well, about a month ago, while my boyfriend was in the shower, I saw a text notification pop up on his phone. We look at each other's notifications all the time, so I grabbed his phone to see it. It was from her, asking if they were still on for tonight, and if she should wear his favorite dress. He told me he was hanging out with friends and going drinking. Him going drinking with friends wasn't unusual, so I never thought anything of it. But in hindsight, I wonder how much of him going out was with friends, and how much of it was going out with her. I saved screenshots of their conversations, and I sent them to myself. I show him the messages when he came out of the bathroom, and demanded he explained himself about them. I couldn't contain how upset and angry and hurt I was. An argument ensued, where I told him he was disgusting, and I left his place. Shortly after arriving home, I started getting bombarded with calls and texts from my best friend. I answered none of her calls. I couldn't stomach hearing her voice, but her texts ranged from, she never meant to hurt me. My boyfriend hit on her first. It didn't mean anything. Then it got angry, saying I should hear her out, that if I was a real friend, I would take her calls. That I'm being petty and childish for not listening to her side. Then back to sad, saying I was her closest friend in the world, and she didn't want to lose me. My boyfriend was strangely quiet during this time. After a few days, I got myself together enough to send them both messages. Maybe it was cowardly, but I didn't have the strength to call them. I told my now ex-boyfriend that we were done, and I won't give cheaters any chances with me. He responded by trying to call me, but after the third or fourth attempt, he gave up. He sent me a final message saying it wasn't that big of a deal, that they just fooled around, but agreeing he didn't want to date me anymore. My ex-best friend was more persistent after I told her I wanted nothing to do with her. Day after day, I'd get messages and calls from her, demanding to talk, demanding we resolve this, demanding I not say anything to anyone, saying she stopped seeing him, saying she'll end herself if I don't talk to her. Really messed up stuff. I ended up confiding to a mutual friend about what was going on because I was seriously beginning to wonder if I was being a witch. This friend reassured me that my feelings were justified. However, I wasn't expecting this friend to spread around what happened. The gossip spread like wildfire, and a few days ago, my ex-best friend tried to take her life. I said nothing. I haven't visited her in the hospital. I haven't sent any messages to her family. Now her older sister keeps messaging me, telling me I'm a heartless girl for leaving her at her lowest. For not trying to prevent this, that everyone makes mistakes, and that her sister didn't intentionally hurt me. Maybe it does make me a heartless witch, but I don't care. I'm relieved she survived, but I'll never forgive her. I'll never forgive her betrayal. She destroyed our friendship when she slept with my boyfriend. You are not heartless. You are the victim of a heartless witch and a cheating bastard. Your friend betrayed you in the worst way, then tried to emotionally manipulate you into continuing the friendship so she could alleviate her own guilt. What she chose to do after that is also on her. All of this mess is of her making, and you owe her nothing. Not sympathy, not forgiveness, and certainly not friendship. We have to trust friends after all. For your sake, Opie, you need to find a way to move forward without bitterness, because that will only hurt you more. However, you have to do that. Whether that's with therapy or whatever, you need to do it. But that does not mean you have to allow this person back into your life or listen to anyone who says otherwise. Thank you. I know, I don't think I'm over what they did to me. Three-year relationship and a 16-year friendship down the drain. I'll look into therapy, but between schoolwork and a part-time job, it might be difficult. It's stupid because I wasn't feeling guilty that she had attempted to take her life. But after what her sister said, I was starting to feel guilty for not feeling guilty, if that makes sense. It was really getting to me, so I had to tell someone. I'm glad she survived, but I'm not looking forward to the next few days. I've already gotten messages from her cousin today. Agreed.
Hate and resentment is a poison we keep for ourselves. Like they say, the best revenge is going on to have a wonderful and happy life. Be glad these two showed you who they are, and now you know you are not wasting more time on these fools. Thank you, I'll do my best. I've got plenty going on to keep me busy, and I've got friends to keep me sane through all this. I still get angry and sad at them both from time to time, but I'm getting there. That her sister didn't intentionally hurt me. Your best friend was still making current plans to continue cheating with your boyfriend. Sounds pretty intentional. None of it is your fault, and you are not obligated to ease your former best friend's mind with attention or forgiveness. She's suffering the consequences of her own actions. I hope your ex is suffering the same. I freaking hate cheaters. Yep, that's the line that got me. Of course it was intentional, because she knew it would hurt her best friend. Even with what happened being spread, and it would have eventually, none of this was your fault. She isn't well, and her family wants to blame someone else even knowing how former bestie behaved. I don't know if my ex-BFF told her family the full story. If her sister wanted a calm discussion about it, I would have been more than happy to. But she was typing horrible things in my DMs, so I've just blocked her and moved on. I actually don't know what's happening with my ex. He rarely posts on social media, and our social circles and friend groups are pretty different. I don't really care to know either. One of his friends did try to call me, but they hung up before I could answer. Was I wrong for lying to my fiancé about how my first divorce really went down? I, 34 female, have been with my fiancé, 40 male, for 6 years now. He proposed a year ago and we were looking at a small October wedding. Before I was with my fiancé, from 21 to 26 I was married to my ex-husband, 34 male. Those were some of the happiest and worst years of my life. My ex was the most attractive guy I had ever met, and even now he looks like a 24-year-old instead of an almost 35-year-old. However, we were stuck in dead-end jobs because we were both high school dropouts living in Alabama. We were creatives who wanted to save money to move to New York or LA, but never had any money. We both worked in service positions, but I felt that most of the people who walked in the doors were just idiots. I grew to hate serving them, and this reflected in the tips and performance reviews I got. Meanwhile, my ex would get mad at me not showing up to work and saying the people I served deserved basic respect from me. I ended up quitting my job and my ex made me take the job at the hotel where he worked. And I got more depressed because I felt life was passing me by and my ex expected us to accept our life was just going to be about work. We got into more fights about how he had to convince the manager to not fire me. Finally, I got so depressed that I started talking to a friend of mine who was a nightclub dancer in Atlanta. I took a train there and tried out. I was ashamed to tell my husband that I was doing this behind his back and didn't want to face his anger over me quitting the job he got me. So one day I just packed up and left. My ex filed for divorce and listed abandonment as the cause. We only had $2,000 in assets, so to settle the divorce, my ex mailed me a check for $900, assumed our credit card debts, and that was that. He has never contacted me again, so I assumed he was not hurt. I eventually became a hospital receptionist and met my now fiancé who was a radiologist. I told him about being divorced once, but said that we grew apart and then sat down and amicably worked out a divorce. My fiancé replied it was a mature decision that spoke well to my character. I thought that the omission of detail was far from evil. I was not unfaithful or abusive. However, in the midst of announcing our engagement, a friend of my ex resurfaced and he was able to contact my fiancé without my knowledge. From there, my fiancé dug up information about my divorce, including the fact I was accused of abandonment by my ex. He even talked to former friends of mine. He finally confronted me and said that I lied about how I ended things with my ex and called me cold. He said that this gave him cold feet about who he was marrying and that he wanted to postpone the wedding indefinitely. I am heartbroken. He's now staying somewhere else and says he needs time to think. We had an argument where I was angry that he invaded my privacy about something that happened a decade ago. I have been supportive of his career and stuck around for six years waiting for him to be ready to commit. Was I wrong? I hate the fact that Alabama divorces are public record and he's using that to defend his actions. This was all on you. You were the one who lied and everyone knows lies have a way of coming out on their own. One thing that always stuck with me is something my grandma used to tell me as a kid. Every lie you tell will one day come to light, that it is always best to be honest. That's what I try to tell my kids, and they don't believe me until I call them out on it. My kid recently started lying, 
Totally innocent things, like no, I wasn't picking my nose, but it's a bad habit to start. I tell them, you might not going to get in trouble for the thing, but you're always going to get in trouble for lying. You lied to your partner about something very significant. Maybe you didn't hold that marriage in high regard, but to most people, marriage is not taken lightly. You don't have to tell your partner every detail of your past, but the fact that you told him something completely opposite of what happened and he found out from someone else makes everything you say now not at all believable. You lost his trust and you have to accept a very real possibility that you probably won't get it back. Yes, if Opie had told him a more or less true but heavily redacted version of the truth and left out some details, that would be one thing. But to completely lie, I would not trust that anything they had ever told me was the truth. Like, if she just said, I was married too young with no life skills or education to fall back on. We were always broke, I was miserable and depressed, and didn't know how to handle any of it. One day I just up and left. I regret how I handled it, but I just knew I had to get out, and I couldn't handle even one more day of that life. We divorced soon after, and I haven't seen or spoken to him since. No need to explain Atlanta, or dancing, or how horrible of a spouse slash worker she was. But on the actual important part which is that you just walked away one day without a word. He never contacted me again, so I assumed he was not hurt. Ma'am, you ghosted a whole marriage. That is a big red flag for any partner. Of course it matters that you lied about it. You can literally see the a-hole case building throughout the whole post, and the final sentences are the cherry on top. Literally, she was the a-hole from like the third sentence, and then it just got worse and worse as it went on. I loved that she was a high school dropout from Alabama waiting tables and thought her customers were the idiots. Narcissistic. She thinks she's better than everyone and refuses to look at the outcome she gets as what she deserves. I, 29 male, caught my girlfriend, 30 female, on dating sites. We've been together about a year and a half now. Last week, I went out to her place in the morning to surprise her with some food. We have been fighting a bit, so it was going to be a full date day. She rolled over in bed, and I saw a message on her home screen saying, You're such a beautiful girl. Why are you on dating sites? So at this point, she's just woken up. Obviously, I'm pretty tense and she asks me if I'm okay. I'm like, I'm not really sure. I just seen a message on your phone that said, Why are you on dating sites? You're such a beautiful girl. She replies, What are you talking about? That's crazy. I'm not on any dating sites. And then like ran to the restroom. She was in the restroom for quite a while and then finally comes out and goes, yes, I was on a dating site. We've been fighting a lot, but it's not like that. I was just wanting to see what was out there. I left because I was in a pretty big panic. My ex prior to her that I was with for 10 years cheated on me constantly and it destroyed me. So she knows how I feel about stuff like that. She texts me and says, I didn't cheat though. I would have never have even met up with or talked to anyone without telling you first and breaking it off. I'm sorry that I downloaded it, I was just lost and hurting. We don't have an open relationship of any kind, and obviously she was talking to someone since that was over text, meaning she's been giving out her number. She keeps saying things like I'm sure it's all very worse in your head. I questioned her a bit more on it, and she said, he was the only one I messaged. I matched with people and let my inbox fill up. I only responded to him because he's friends with Danny and Aaron. She keeps telling me it's worse in my head, and I'm overreacting. I'm so torn apart. I love this girl, but after my ex, I promised myself I'd never put myself through that again. She says she doesn't want to lose me and will do whatever it takes. Then said I can look through her entire phone now. Kinda late now, since she had a week to delete everything. So a few questions. Should I even give her another chance? Is this cheating? If I go through the phone and find obviously deleted messages, how should I respond? Is she trying to gaslight me? She just wants to hold on to you until she finds the next best thing. If you're having problems in a relationship, you should be focused on trying to find ways to make things better. You don't go on dating sites to see what's out there. How does that make your relationship better? She's already emotionally checked out. Let her go. People in a mature relationship would not have downloaded a dating app during a fight slash argument. We would show up with breakfast and hash things out. Opie is still young. He can notch this as a learning experience and move on. She keeps telling me it's worse in my head and I'm overreacting. If she keeps on justifying her actions and blaming you for overreacting, then you know it's over. She's trying out her other options while keeping you as the safe option. Based on her comment, without telling you first and breaking it off, 
Once she finds a viable candidate, she'll just move ahead and dump you. Gaslighting at its finest. Turn it around on the other person. Opie, whether you love this girl or not is not the issue. She knows how you feel about cheating. Whether you are fighting or not, if she was committed to fixing things, then she would have focused on that, not looking to see what else is out there. Do not make someone a priority when all you are to them is an option. You deserve better. Once she finds a viable candidate, she'll just move ahead and dump you. Yep, she said exactly this in a way that makes it very hard for Opie to feel like he's in the right. She's full of it and is a cheater. You don't need her to admit to anything. Don't be one of those people who stay because they can't wave concrete proof under the cheater's nose or need to hear them admit it. It's just consciously turning a blind eye to the obvious because it's easier than walking until you have no choice, as if you have no choice. It's choosing the worst of both worlds. You are choosing to date with someone who would cheat on you and give up your self-respect at the same time. In the least, if you are going to stay, acknowledge she's a cheater and you are going to give her the same level of regard she's going to give you, so your dignity is intact by the time it's over.